What's up everyone? Welcome back to the Durbin Compound. If you haven't met me already, my name is Devin Durbin. So today on the channel, we're doing a, uh, basically a, a furnace troubleshooting video. I'm going to show you the principles of operation, the theory behind everything, and just how a furnace works. Um, we're going to do a propane natural gas setup. Um, every furnace is going to be different. Every single uh, manufacturer has their own spin on things. So uh, I'm going to try to teach you the basics and uh, get you educated on exactly how it works so you can troubleshoot your system. Stay tuned. All right, guys, I'm gonna go through this theory of operation very quickly. We're going to roll in a picture here of the steps necessary for the furnace to kick on. And then uh, later on in the video, I will roll in a, uh, a time at the bottom that will show you exactly what time you should go to to uh, troubleshooting different scenarios. So first, let's go through the theory of operation with the furnace. First thing I want everybody to check if you're having a no heat issue um, or uh, you know your furnace is not running, make sure there's power to your furnace. So if you haven't seen my video on how to check to see if a circuit breaker is popped, you need to make sure that your furnace has power. So come over to your electrical panel and make sure that your furnace is getting the power from the circuit breaker. So down here is a 20 amp breaker for my furnace. It is on, okay? Make sure you have power. Then you can come back over to the furnace and initially when you open up the door on the furnace, you have a switch that you have to depress in order for the furnace to turn on. For the video's sake, I've went ahead and put a screw in it. Make sure you check this first. Once you pull the covers off here, you need to either tape, wedge, or hold this button in in order for the furnace to operate. So first things first is our draft inducer will come on. The draft inducer pulls draft through the heat exchanger um, and uh, uh, directs that, that burnt fuel and, and um, exhaust out a pipe. So if you have an 80% efficient furnace, this is going to be metal. If you have a 90% efficient furnace, you're gonna have PVC pipe. Okay, once the draft inducer comes on, it has to create a certain amount of pressure in order for it to say, hey, we're ready to rock and roll. So this tube here, it's clear. Some, uh, a lot of furnaces do square tube that's red or green, um, and you'll see it come up to a diaphragm switch. So this diaphragm switch needs a certain amount of pressure to make the contact inside the switch. So after, this, after the draft inducer creates enough uh, pressure, it will click the switch. That's when it tells the circuit board here that we need to fire the furnace. So then we'll see a red igniter turn on. You'll see a bright orange glow or bright red glow, and that is uh, your ignition for your gas or propane. So once you have your ignition or igniter on for a set amount of time designated by the control board, the gas valve will then click on. So the gas valve clicks on, sends gas up through your manifold here, and then all of your burners come on. Now, once the burners come on and there is flame, you have to have fl the flame sensor has to sense that flame. If the flame sensor does not sense the flame, they're not it, the control board is not going to keep pumping gas out into your house. So it's going to go ahead and turn it back off. So later on in the video, we'll talk about certain scenarios and why it doesn't work and exactly what it does. I might even fire it up multiple times to show you exactly uh, what each part does. So after we have flame and it senses flame, um, your fan, your main fan is going to kick on and create the airflow out into the house. So I'm going to fire it up. Let's uh, go, I will talk you straight through exactly what's about to happen. Um, and then uh, I'll show you what it's supposed to do in all of its glory um, the right way. And then I'll go through, we'll unhook some things and I'll show you exactly what it does if it's this, if it's that, blah, blah, blah. Let's go ahead and fire it up. All right, now we've turned on the furnace, draft inducer comes on. It has to create enough pressure to click this switch. You'll hear it.
it might take a couple seconds. Okay, now we should see the glow of the igniter come on. All right, now the glow on the igniter has come on. Okay, it's getting hot. Once it gets hot for a certain amount of time, it will tell the gas valve to click. All right, and boom, now we have flame. So our flame comes on and we are ready to rock and roll. It has sensed flame through the flame sensor and told the furnace to keep it on. After we or I have a couple seconds of, of heat through the exchanger, the main fan will turn on. All right, and now our main fan is up and running. All right, guys, so that was the main, uh, exactly how it should work if everything goes according to plan. So I'm gonna show you first here, um, this is if you skipped forward in the video um, and you want some troubleshooting tips on things to do. Um, the first thing is going to be the flame sensor. So this is a common thing. The flame sensor is really simple. Um, let's go ahead and take it out here and I'll show you exactly what it looks like. Okay guys, this is a flame sensor here. It is literally just a metal rod um, with uh, you know, uh, a, a wire connected to it. And so a small electric current is passed through the flame into this flame sensor. And uh, sometimes these get uh, charred up with carbon and just a little bit of sandpaper, some scotch bright, literally anything to take the carbon off this will get it to work 100%. So now I'm gonna run the furnace without the flame sensor in place so that it cannot do its job. And I'm gonna show you exactly what it does um, if you have a flame sensor problem. All right, so this process is the same exact. Uh, our flame sensor's just out. Our draft inducer just came on. Remember, we need to make the pressure in order for the pressure sensor to click over. And we'll hear the audible click, and we'll look for our igniter. All right, there's the click. We're gonna watch our igniter warm up. Now, remember with the flame sensor, it's not uh, sensing flame, so it'll immediately go out. Here we go. All right, we have flame and it won't stay on long. All right, see how the flame just went out like that and the igniter went down? That is because it did not sense the flame through the flame sensor. So if your furnace is doing that and kicking out, most likely you have a flame sensor problem. Let's go on to the next scenario. All right, guys, so next step, um, if your furnace is doing that, we knew that it was the flame sensor ordeal. Um, now let's go to some other scenarios. Your furnace is calling for heat. Your draft inducer isn't coming on. Well, you might have a problem with your motor, the fuse in your furnace, um, something along those lines. Um, these lock up, these get rusty from time to time. It depends on the, on the design um, and exactly what they are. Uh, so if it does not create the right amount of pressure, um, your switch might be bad, uh, the draft inducer might be bad. Um, so one thing that you want to do is uh, to troubleshoot this is you can take the wires straight off of your, of, your, um, of your pressure switch and you can connect them together. So let's say that you run your furnace and the draft inducer is spinning, it's making noise, but nothing else happens. You don't get an igniter, um, you're not getting any flame, you're not getting any other clicks, but your draft inducer is running. That means that this isn't either creating enough pressure or the pressure switch is bad. So if this isn't up to snuff or 100%, it's not gonna make enough pressure to click this or this switch is bad. So you can connect these two wires off of here and if your furnace goes ahead and fires up, well, hey, you know the problem is the draft inducer is not creating enough pressure or the pressure switch is bad. That's a real simple thing to do. Um, you can just take these leads off. It's 24 volts DC. You don't need to be scared of it. Um, literally connect the two wires together and figure it out. So if, you're, if you do this and you take the pressure switch 
uh, wires off and you're still not getting anything. Well, next place to look is obviously in the lineup of things, your igniter. If your igniter's not coming on, it's a it's a good thing to shoot this. You can shoot uh, power to this as 120 volts, or easily you can take you can remove it with a simple quarter inch uh, nut driver, and you can take it out and see exactly what's wrong with it. Now this one is uh, basically a, uh, a it looks like a, a regular heating element. Sometimes they get cracked and they uh, fail. So if it's not coming on, if you hear that audible click but your igniter isn't coming on, then boom, you might have an igniter problem. So um, those are the simple things to look for on your furnace to make sure that you don't have an issue. Um, you can most likely uh, figure out any problem from right then and there. You can jump your little your switches. Um, if your furnace is not coming on at all, you might have one of these temperature switches that, are, that is bad. Um, you can go through one by one and literally pull the wires off of it and connect them together to the other wire and jump that switch. Now, I do not recommend that you run it like that, but in an extreme situation, if you had a, uh, a rollout sensor bad or a, or a high temp sensor bad, um, you know, and it's not letting your furnace start, in the meantime, you can put those together to get some emergency heat to your house, but you definitely need to be here and babysitting this bad boy because if there's really an issue and it's really overheating, you don't want to melt this thing down and create a fire. So don't do anything unsupervised. If you're not comfortable with it, get a professional in um, to look at your furnace. So we're going to go over one more time the basic 100% uh, startup from the from the beginning, uh, and if you don't understand it, please leave some comments in the video, and I'll be sure to try to help you out as fast as I can. All right, now our draft inducers come on. This is correct operation. Remember, creating enough pressure to get our pressure switch to uh, make here. We hear an audible click. Now the circuit board has told us that we need ignition. Wait for our igniter to glow. You can see the little hoop in it. All right. And we'll have fire. Boom, piece of cake. Now you'll wait on it. The flame sensor will say, hey, we do have flame here. And we're ready to rock and roll to stay on. And after it has created enough time, the circuit board will tell the fan, main fan to come on, and we're rocking and rolling. It's that easy. All right, guys, I hope that video helped someone out. If you have any questions or concerns, put them in the comments below. I will do my best to answer your questions. Um, if you're working on an electric furnace, they're different. You've got sequencers and all kinds of stuff. Um, I do not have an electric furnace to show you um, all the steps to troubleshoot through that, but um, I hope this helped somebody out. If it did, give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down, whatever you're into, and be sure to click that subscribe button. I'd love to see you around the channel. If you're one of the loyal subscribers that have been around the channel for a while and you're just here to watch new content, I applaud thee, and we'll see you guys in the next video.